Welcome to the Story World channel. Enjoy your viewing experience. In the tapestry of Elton's modest existence, tattered garments clung to his frame, a humble emblem of his family's straitened circumstances. Yet his spirit burned undimmed, ablaze with confidence, and kindled by an insatiable curiosity that set him apart. Within the hallowed halls of academia, where minds converged like stars in the night sky, Elton's inquisitiveness was met with resounding applause from the very mentors who beheld his fervor. In the same realm, a juxtaposed figure emerged, Scarlet, a tempestuous tempest, harbored an immediate disdain for the newcomer, casting him a wary side glance from the very commencement of his sojourn in the realm of education. Her vexation knew no bounds, a sentiment as palpable as the air one breathes. A prodigious lineage, where her father's stature loomed large, cast its shadow, marked by opulence, social circles that entwined like ivy, and the alluring presence of a radiant consort. However, Scarlet's heart harbored shadows darker than the ink of night. Her amusement took root in torment, her laughter a cadence that heralded humiliation. She found delight in the theatrical, wielding her power to rouse her peers against Elton, a twisted theater of young hearts and impressionable minds. The wheels of fate turned, their machinations casting Elton in the spotlight of vulnerability. A seemingly mundane act, a quest for sustenance, led him to the store's threshold. It was there that the tapestry of destiny unfurled, Scarlet's eyes alighting upon him like a hawk spotting its prey. Her gesture, ostentatious and cruel, sent shockwaves through the air as she brushed past him, the jingle of coins mingling with the echoes of her derisive laughter. A fleeting moment etched in time encapsulated the essence of this encounter. Scarlet's words, dripping with saccharine poison, masked her intent. A princely sum, offered without strings, fluttered through the air, a stark contrast to the heartless quips that resounded through the crowd, a choir of juvenile derision. Yet within Elton's soul, a fire raged. Battles waged and triumphs claimed, a testament to his resilience. The echoes of his victories reverberated through the corridors of the school, a clarion call that whispered to would-be bullies, beware, for the newcomer is no docile lamb, but a lion tempered by adversity. Within the tapestry's warp and weft, a new chapter unfurled. The city's embrace beckoned, a refuge from the humble village that held the family in its embrace for far too long. A matriarch's resolve and a yearning for more forged the path ahead. The specter of loss loomed, the family patriarch claimed by the relentless grip of oncology, a bitter reminder that even the most respected souls are not spared from its clutches. In the crucible of transformation, Elton and his kin ventured forth, a narrative still being woven, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, bound by threads of perplexity, burstiness, and the tantalizing unpredictability that shapes the grand tapestry of existence. In the grand tapestry of life, the role of breadwinner fell upon the shoulders of Mrs. Thompson, propelling her and her children into the bustling embrace of the city. Nestled on the fringes of urban sprawl, they sought refuge in a rented dwelling, weaving the threads of adaptation into the fabric of their existence. Upon their arrival, Elton wasted no time in seeking his place amidst the city's rhythms. A humble grocery store, nestled in the neighborhood's heart, became his crucible. As a loader, he toiled, the weight of crates and boxes a tangible testament to his dedication. A meager wage it might have been, Yet its contribution to the family coffers was immeasurable, a lifeline of sustenance that eased the strain. In tandem with his endeavors, Mrs. Thompson donned the mantle of a cleaner, her days a dance with the broom and cloth. Beside her, Elton stood, a steadfast ally in her quest for order. The symbiotic harmony between mother and son infused their days with purpose, an unspoken promise to forge ahead against the tides of adversity. In the realm of academia, Elton's spirit found solace amidst the complexities of math, physics, and computer science. A prodigious intellect set him apart, 
a constellation of teachers recognizing his gifts and nurturing them through Olympiads and like-minded companionships. The echoes of his achievements resounded within the walls of their modest abode, a melody that warmed Mrs. Thompson's heart. Proud was but a feeble word to encapsulate the torrent of emotions that surged within Mrs. Thompson. As her eyes danced across her child's report card, hope materialized in ink and numbers, a testament to the dreams she cradled in her heart. My good boy, my hope, she whispered, a lullaby of pride that transcended mere language. Yet, amidst accolades and scholastic triumphs, a pang of inadequacy gnawed at Elton's soul. The cruel jests of material insufficiency cast a shadow, a silent dissonance between his brilliance and his peers' perceptions. The allure of modernity, personified in threads and trends, eluded his grasp, leaving him yearning to traverse the chasm that separated him from his classmates' affections. In the ebb of twilight, a mother and son engaged in a profound conversation, their words a bridge between generations. Elton's reluctance to attend the prom was met with maternal reassurance, the promise of a resplendent suit a whisper of encouragement. A celebration awaited, a night of dancing and merriment, a respite from the strains of life's tribulations. The school's hallowed halls had long since faded into memory, almost a decade's journey from those bittersweet days. Scarlett's narrative had evolved in tandem, her family's fortunes taking a somber turn. Her father's health faltered, a grim specter that claimed his vitality and eventually his life. The matron who once graced society sorries found herself grappling with the intricacies of business, a domain far removed from her previous milieu. Life's inexorable currents had propelled both Elton and Scarlett along divergent trajectories, each surmounting their unique challenges. From the crucible of humble beginnings to the gilded halls of possibility, their stories continued to unfold, testament to the resilience of the human spirit against the tapestry of time. In the aftermath of a series of ill-fated transactions, the company's fortune dwindled, ultimately succumbing to the icy grip of bankruptcy. Scarlet's ire blazed, a tempest of emotions that raged against her mother's decisions. The weight of responsibility bore down upon her, each question a shard of frustration aimed at her parents' apparent lack of foresight. Did you not anticipate such moments? Scarlet's voice trembled with a mixture of anger and despair. Was there no contingency plan for times like these? Her words spiraled into the air, an echo of her frustration reverberating through the room. In the storm of emotions, Scarlett's voice reached a crescendo, a frenzied symphony of anxiety and exasperation. I've never toiled in the realm of labor, and I had no intention of ever doing so, she cried, her voice teetering on the precipice of hysteria. The thought of mundane employment, of being tethered to a time clock and constrained by the counting of coins, sent shivers down Scarlet's spine. Her fear was palpable, her vision of a life shackled to routine a specter that haunted her dreams. Honey, I am at a loss, Mrs. Thompson's voice trembled, a plaintive note echoing in her words. Your father was our anchor, our beacon of hope. Without him, I am adrift, cast upon the turbulent sea of uncertainty. Her voice wavered, her own desperation laid bare. As destiny's currents shifted, Scarlett found herself navigating the maze of employment, securing a role as a secretary in a trading company. Yet the veneer of professionalism concealed a brewing storm, her dissatisfaction a tempest that churned beneath the surface. Bernard, a figure of both stature and age, emerged as a fateful chapter in Scarlett's narrative, a director of the company, he carried with him the weight of his own past. Divorced, childless, and inching toward middle age, his vulnerability was a canvas upon which Scarlet's designs took shape. The strings of manipulation, deftly woven, entwined Scarlet and Bernard, a web of need and desire spun between them. She painted him with words of adoration, fanning the embers of his self-belief. Reliable, smart, she murmured, stoking the fires of his longing for relevance and love. 
In a world where dreams and insecurities intermingled, Scarlet's words took root, and Bernard found himself captivated by her spell. Move mountains, he proclaimed, a declaration of his devotion, blinded to the impending precipice. Their union, a culmination of calculated charm, propelled them into the realm of matrimony. Scarlet's world transformed, a lavish tapestry unfurling before her, adorned with the opulence of fine dining and luxurious retreats. She indulged in the finery of beauty treatments and extravagance, her cares cloaked in the shimmering allure of prosperity. Yet the facade began to crumble, the grandeur of Scarlet's life, a fleeting illusion. Bernard, a pillar of stability, teetered on the brink of chaos. In the aftermath of a night fueled by excess, he revealed the unraveling threads of his existence. Folders scattered, a picture frame shattered, a glass of whiskey spilled, the debris of his frustration painted a vivid picture of his despair. The mantle of leadership, once Bernard's to bear, had been wrested from him, a blow that reverberated with indignation and disbelief. His methods deemed obsolete, his efforts futile, he stood at the precipice of professional demise, a legacy shattered by the swift currents of change. In this tumultuous symphony, Scarlet's charade crumbled, the foundation of her lavish lifestyle eroded by Bernard's fall from grace. The pendulum swung once more, a reminder that fortunes, like tides, can swiftly shift. As the echoes of Bernard's lament filled the air, Scarlet was left to contemplate the fragility of her illusions, a testament to the transient nature of fabulous lives. A name uttered with casual dismissal, Elton Thompson, unfurled through the air like a whisper of unfamiliarity. A stranger's moniker, its resonance evoked neither recognition nor significance. Where do they find him? The words were tinged with skepticism, an inquiry punctuated by the quirk of a brow. In the wake of this utterance, a tableau of memories splintered through Scarlet's mind, fragments of a past where mocking laughter echoed within the corridors of academia. The name bore weight, tethering her to her own history. Seated within the embrace of a chair, contemplation painted her features, her thoughts a labyrinth of reflection. Time flowed, an unrelenting river that carried with it a tide of transformation. A month's passage brought upheaval. Bernard, once the director, had been stripped of his throne, relegated to the humbler role of a manager. The grandeur of his reign had crumbled, leaving behind a trail of modesty and dwindling wages. The chasm between past and present yawned wide, a stark reminder of life's fickleness. Scarlet, perceptive and pragmatic, discerned Bernard's waning utility, the once revered figure now rendered obsolete. A decision coalesced, fueled by desperation and ambition. The contours of a plan took shape, a gambit aimed at a new target, a familiar name from the annals of her school days. Elton, now the incumbent director, stood as the focal point of Scarlet's audacious ploy. A provocative ensemble adorned her, woven with the threads of calculated allure. With the audacity of a siren, she ventured forth, determined to replicate the artifice that had once ensnared Bernard's heart. Elton, darling. Her entrance was an orchestrated spectacle, an unapologetic disruption of decorum that disregarded the secretary's objections. I must say, that suit accentuates your solidity. A fine choice. Elton's gaze, cool and collected, met her exuberance with professional detachment. Scarlet, he acknowledged, his tone a measured cadence of business. He busied himself with the ritual of preparation. A symphony of folders and documents ushered into his leather briefcase. Why so frosty, Elton? A mere old friendship brings me here, Scarlet cooed her voice a sugared serenade that brushed against his ears. Her presence, a tempest of memories and implications, nestled itself upon the edge of his desk, a tableau of tension between them. A smile ghosted across Elton's lips as he surveyed Scarlet's demeanor. Did the echoes of our high school days resurface in your thoughts? He inquired, his gaze a labyrinth of curiosity. Her positioning, the casual crossing of legs, spoke volumes, an unspoken narrative between them. 
Words tumbled forth, carried by Scarlet's capricious whims. Just five minutes, Elton, that's all I ask. A matter of profound urgency requires your assistance. The flutter of lashes, a delicate gesture of appeal, accompanied her plea, a performance wrapped in sophistication. Within this encounter, the tapestry of their histories intertwined, the echoes of the past reverberating within the currents of the present. A dance of intent and intrigue unfolded, each step a measured stride upon the stage of possibility. Through the veneer of charm and calculated manipulation, a question lingered, a question that only time and circumstance could unveil. Would Elton succumb to the siren song, or would he stand steadfast against its beguiling melody? Aim at the labyrinth of my workaday struggles, I find myself grappling with a myriad of challenges, each presenting its own unique puzzle. A testament to the intricate dance between effort and outcome, the professional terrain before me is as perplexing as it is demanding. In this intricate ballet of corporate life, an intriguing metamorphosis has occurred, where once you were a mere classmate, you now reign as the formidable figurehead, the big boss. A change of such magnitude is not without its ripple effects, and it beckons for a moment of reflection. As I navigate this labyrinthine workspace, beset by enigmatic trials, I implore you not to forsake your role as the harbinger of aid. A simple plea, yet its implications are far-reaching and resonate with the very essence of camaraderie. Extend your hand to lift me from the quagmire that threatens to engulf, a testament to the bond we shared through the academic trenches. For, in times of strife, the mark of true leadership is not in the abandonment of a comrade but in the unwavering support that transcends titles and hierarchies. The somber notes of my circumstances reverberate, an elegy to a father departed, leaving behind the harsh gusts of financial adversity. My mother and I stand as sentinels against the tempestuous winds, burdened not only by scarcity, but also by the weight of her frailty. The specter of despair looms, a constant reminder of my newfound responsibilities. Yet within me lies an unfamiliarity with the rigors of toil, a reluctance that whispers doubt and uncertainty. A hesitant gaze turns towards Davian, a friend who grasps the hand of potential, urging me to embrace the uncharted path of exertion. Why not lend your hand? The question lingers in the air, a plea that dangles between hope and expectation. A query that seeks to bridge the chasm between aspiration and action, inviting a harmonious symphony of collaboration. Yet the threads of fate are woven with their own designs, and at present, the tapestry of opportunities remains woven tight, each slot filled, save for the humble role of a janitor. A wistful smile graces the lips of the inquirer, his response a testament to the acceptance of circumstance. A tableau unfolds, a vivid depiction of human interaction, an affectionate countenance etched across Scarlet's visage, later replaced by the storm clouds of anger and defiance. A shift in the winds of emotion, a poignant reminder of the complexities that underlie human connection. The table's edge bears witness to Scarlet's descent, a graceful slide that mirrors the futility of her efforts. A cascade of tears, not of sorrow, but of fiery resolve, threatens to breach the dams of restraint. In the wake of this emotional tempest, the debris of shattered dreams settles, a poignant tableau of aspirations unmet. A stark realization takes root. No longer can she lean upon the scaffolding of others. No longer can she weave her destiny through borrowed threads. Her narrative, once dominated by carefree indulgence, now stands at the precipice of transformation. The jests and jesters of yesteryears fade into oblivion, leaving in their wake the gnawing truth, carelessness sows seeds of desolation, and the reckoning is inevitable. No longer can the tapestry of academia be dismissed with a casual shrug, for mocking now holds a bitter taste, a reminder that the jesters of today may be the sovereigns of tomorrow. The mirthful facade dismantled, paving the way for a newfound humility that cradles the fragile bud of growth. Amidst the ruins of self-assuredness, a phoenix of resilience stirs. 
With each ember of determination, Scarlet emerges from the crucible, shedding the shackles of dependency. The journey ahead, though formidable, teems with potential, a realm where her own sweat and toil lay the foundation for triumph. But as the chapters of her story unfurl, a harsh truth unveils its face, a reality wherein the tapestry of privilege frays at the edges. Her father's once mighty shadow cast aside, leaving her exposed to the elements of a callous world. No longer can she bask in the sheltered embrace of a powerful lineage. Her identity must be reforged, her essence redefined. Scarlet Harriet stands at the threshold of transformation, a pivotal juncture where her steps are not dictated by the dictates of others, but by the rhythm of her own heart. The corridors of authority beckon, a realm where gender becomes irrelevant and capability reigns supreme. Yet Destiny's script takes an unexpected twist, the man of authority extending an unanticipated olive branch. A serendipitous pause halts Scarlet's exit, a moment pregnant with possibility. In this token lies more than currency, he utters, the words weighted with intention. Hope flares anew within Scarlet's gaze, a beacon of possibility amidst the uncertainty. Elton's gesture, a simple yet profound act, paints a canvas of contradiction. A momentary lapse into Avaris is shrouded by the pallor of regret. I am but settling a debt, his nonchalant demeanor barely conceals the complexity within. And thus, the chapter closes with an exhalation of resignation, a tableau where the currents of fate part ways. Elton forges ahead, ascending the rungs of leadership with resolve, his dedication and inspiration to those who tread alongside him. Across the expanse of time, amidst mountains that scrape the heavens, Elton's path intersects with another, a chance encounter that sparks a union of kindred spirits. Holly, a fellow wanderer in life's labyrinth, finds herself ensnared by the enigma of a tent, a seemingly simple puzzle that eludes her grasp. In this shared moment of vulnerability, Elton's essence shines, a beacon of assistance in the twilight of uncertainty. The threads of their lives intertwine, woven by common passions and shared values culminating in a harmony that defies the fleeting nature of happenstance. Time dances swiftly, and eight months hence, a different melody pervades the air. Mesis, a decade down the line, Elton, a triumphantly accomplished entrepreneur, a man of joyous family bonds, and a father raising a trio of cherished offspring, found himself in receipt of a heartfelt invitation, an invitation beckoning him to a grand reunion, one that would reconnect him with the past and the faces that once shared his scholastic journey. In the heartwarming embrace of this reunion, Elton's path serendipitously converged with that of Scarlet once more. Yet the passage of time had etched upon her countenance a narrative of struggle and resilience. Life's tempestuous trials had forged a woman of indomitable strength, but they had also left their mark revealing the scars of battles waged within. Alas for Scarlet, the path had not been as forgiving. She had navigated through the labyrinthine challenges with unwavering determination, yet the weight of her tribulations had proven formidable. The ascent from the depths of her troubles remained a mountain yet to be surmounted. She sought solace in the embrace of alcohol, a fleeting respite from the storms that raged within her. Employed as a humble station cleaner, Scarlet's existence had become intricately entwined with the rhythm of the rails. The toil and sweat exchanged for meager compensation was a stark contrast to the dreams of yesteryears, dreams that once danced in step with Elton's. As their gazes met across the expanse of the reunion hall, the lines of Elton's face carried the echoes of his journey to prosperity while Scarlet's eyes spoke of battles fought, both won and lost. In that moment, a silent understanding passed between them, transcending words, a testament to the myriad paths life can carve, and the unbreakable bonds formed amidst its turbulence.